While dams are just one vital step in providing our drinking water, helping us with flood control and water supply, they can cause great environmental impact, blocking fish migrations which are essential to the health of our aquatic ecosystem. Biologist Mariska Obazinski explains why fish are a vital element of our watershed. Salmon and steelhead populations are indicators of the health of our watersheds. Coho salmon in particular, they live part of their life in freshwater up in the headwater streams, and then they have to migrate out to the ocean through the river systems, through the estuaries, and so they need the environment to be in really good condition in order for them to survive. If we're doing things to help salmon, we're doing things to improve the health of the watersheds and if we can do that, then we are helping ourselves in the long run. There are a lot of really great projects happening in Sonoma County to improve stream habitat for fish populations. One of these projects is the new Mirabelle Fish Ladder that was completed last fall. The ladder is part of a water intake facility that includes an inflatable dam. Engineer and project manager of the fish ladder, Steve Coldis, explains why a new ladder was necessary. When our dam is up and inflated, we fill it with water and we fill it with air. It's about eight feet tall or so, and there's no way for fish to get around it. And that's why we put fish ladders in the river. Our original fish ladder was a denial type fish ladder and that had these plates in it. These fish would jump up and over these steel plates and it was amazing that they could do it but they almost like skimmed just along the top of the water and these fish are amazing swimmers but you can imagine not all fish can do that very well. So we looked at different types of fish ladders. What we ended up with was a vertical slot fish ladder and that allows for all fish to go through without having to jump over any kind of ladder. This new facility also has a state-of-the-art viewing gallery. We built the viewing gallery because we have a program where we take school children to our facilities and we educate them about ecosystems and about watersheds and this just seemed to be a natural thing to add to our facility. I think that people are going to be very impressed when they come to see this site and they see the fish running upstream and seeing the types of fish that are in our river. Um, you'd be amazed at the, at the size of the fish that we get here. We've got a camera on a big window, much bigger than these windows, and we're, we're watching and we're counting and we're classifying all the fish that are going by. It's important that these fish are able to get around our dam so that they can get to our, their spawning habitat. It's so integral to our system. So we did this with a lot of intention. We made, we made sure that we were doing a project that would last. The Warm Springs Fish Hatchery at Lake Sonoma is another project taking the right steps to control our water without harming fish populations. We spoke to Ben White, a biologist with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers at the Fish Hatchery in Lake Sonoma. When you put a dam up, you're basically blocking um, potential habitat above the dam unless you do have some sort of fish ladder to allow the fish to get above the dam. In the case of Warm Springs Dam and, and this hatchery, there is no passage above the dam. So to mitigate for the loss of habitat and the loss of production upstream of Warm Springs Dam, they've put in a hatchery to basically balance out the, the effect of losing um, the spawning habitat and the production upstream of the dam. When the program first started um, 15 years ago, the number of adults returning to the Russian River watershed was very low. I mean, in terms of, of 5, 10, 20 fish total. We've seen that number increase to up over 500 um, adults coming back to the watershed within a 10 year span, which was really a positive thing and, and it allowed us to be very optimistic about this program. The four year historic drought definitely took a toll on the program, but biologists say thanks to the normal rain we've experienced this year, they have already seen twice the amount of fish they saw all of last year. 
The Coho Recovery Program is a captive breeding program. So we raise fish um, from the juvenile life stage to the adult life stage and then we spawn them here in captivity. So during the spawning season, we go through all of our tanks weekly and we're conducting ripeness sorts. We're essentially looking for fish that are mature and ripe and ready to spawn. The external tag allows for easy identification during the spawning process. We also release some of our adults out into the wild to spawn naturally. So some of the fish are getting selected to be released into Salmon Creek as adults. And that's sort of a low risk recovery strategy um, that allows for natural mate selection and allows for these fish to spawn on their own. And then their offspring are wild fish. Coho salmon are an indicator species because of their very rigid life cycle and very specific habitat requirements. So they're sort of a symbol to, as to the health of our watershed. So when the coho salmon population started to decline, I think it's a wake up call that we need to make some improvements to how we manage um, our watersheds and our water as a whole because it'll not only benefit coho salmon, but it'll benefit all the other species that rely on, on water. These fish are very amazing creatures. They don't need a whole lot. Um, they're very resilient, and if we can just put a little bit more care and effort into providing and keeping water in our creeks and streams, I think we're gonna see a really positive trend over the next few years in terms of um, recovery with these fish.